Hey, three, two, one. It's me, Magic Brad, for the Magic Brad Show, and I got my friend, we did it, Steve Gavatorta. You there, Steve? I'm here, man. Good, good, to, be, good to be here, and uh, looking forward to chatting. Yeah, we got good sound quality. It must be the way the, the, the stars are in alignment. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm just going to be grateful for where we're at now. <laughs> you never know how this stuff is going to go, but still, it's miraculous. I just got off with the guy from South Africa you know, about 10 minutes ago. And it's, it's amazing. You can talk in real time. So it's cool. And this is what we got in place of real life. You know, we're doing right. this deal. That's right. So I forgot because I talked to a lot of people. Where are you? Are you in the, you're in the east part of town? I'm in Tampa, Florida, actually. Yeah. Lovely south uh, Tampa. It's an area called Bayshore Boulevard. It's a beautiful day. I'm looking at Hillsborough Bay now. And I'm a, it's Friday. I'm a grateful man. So things are good. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Florida. It's like a little finger down there and you get water on both sides. Do you run into <laughs> alligators and all that stuff? Is that the stuff you got to worry about crossing the road? Not where I'm at, but I mean, they are here. I mean, on golf courses, absolutely. Where my girlfriend lives, there's a canal. And not only alligators, but lizards, um, like iguanas, and they're massive. Now, they won't attack you. You don't have to worry about them. Nor do you really have to worry about alligators. Dogs probably have to worry about alligators and small animals, but uh, not, not too much on the human side. I mean, you can even go water skiing and they'll, they'll run away. They'll run away. They're scared. They're, they're, exactly. They don't want exactly. to play art. Unless they're really hungry, then they might. But Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about your business. I know initially we were talking about, I, I thought you were like a consultant or a speaker. It says consulting, training, coaching, and an author. It says two time. You got two books? I have two books. Yeah. Well, first one is called The Reach Out Approach, and it's a communication process for effective communication in the 21st century. Uh, that was published about 10 years ago. And the second one, this is my real pride and joy, uh, was published about a year and a half ago called In Defensive Adversity, Turning Your Toughest Challenges into Your Greatest Success. Quite uh, timely for what we're going through now. So it's really a discussion about how adversity is really meant to be in our lives to help us grow, transform, and evolve into the people we're meant to become. It is that kind of it is kind of thing that um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger kind of thing. Exactly, absolutely. You know, I'll be a, a personal testament to that. That most of the uh, difficult things that have happened in my life, and I had some serious things, that really helped me. Made, either made me a man, or helped me improve a skill, or um, whatever the learning was, if I was willing to learn. <laughs> yeah. Really. So one of the cool things about learning things is you learn something in one area, but it ends up helping you in other areas. Like if you learn something like on the job, you might find that that's applicable in the family situation. Absolutely. So it does. Uh, if you look at life as everything is an opportunity to learn, I think life is significantly better. You know, whether to your point, whether it's a work thing you can take into the family, you take into the workplace. Um, as long as it's not negative, you know, you don't want to take those negative workplace things right. into the family, the lessons learned, or maybe, maybe from the perspective, maybe you do take, you know, hey, I spoke to an employee uh, in a very negative, harsh way. And maybe, maybe I'm talking to my spouse that way too now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. You well, know, so that's just, a positive way of looking at that. Maybe it's just perceived that you're speaking in a harsh way. I've had that situation, but it's just the person's character. That's the way that they are. They are they're not being malicious or anything, but you got to understand that. So it sounds like that's something that you might help people with. Now, you, you speak from the stage too? I do. I do. I, I, most of my work is a workshop facilitation. You know, I don't consider myself a lecturer. I, I go and work my companies in, in half day, full day, multi day training sessions. So I have a group of anywhere from 10 to 30, maybe 40 people we'll do a workshop around effective communication skills, leadership, selling skills, dealing with adversity, dealing with change management, things of that nature. So that's a bulk of my business. Also, I do my workshops on, and I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I'll do one-on-one -on -one work with high potentials, uh, people in a new position, people struggling, 
who just need an outside opinion. And I'll also do uh, it's like a soup to nuts consulting. If a company or an uh, entrepreneur has a business need, maybe going everything from writing vision, mission, values, short-term, long-term objectives, I'll work with them from that perspective too. So I fashion myself more as a consultant. I really try to go in, work with my clients, ask questions, uncover needs, and build a custom solution for them. And it's helpful too to have someone like yourself on the outside because sometimes you know you can't see it because you're stuck in that goldfish bowl and you need someone else to give you some input. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Plus, you know, I'm not trying to be cocky. I, I spent I've owned my business for 17 years, so through those years I've accumulated a lot, a lot of knowledge, a lot of things. But prior to that, I spent 21 years in corporate America uh, in sales and marketing oriented roles, and and really. Gamble in the day were they were very good in training developing people, and uh, I was fortunate to have that type of training. And I was able to do that for my entire career. So. Okay, um, we were getting a little more sound um, issues, but I think I kind of figured it out if I interrupt and say something, my sound might do something to your sound so that it sounds okay. better. So we're gonna we're gonna try that. So okay. if I say yeah, something while you're talking, I'm not trying to interrupt. I'm trying to stop the thing. But okay, we'll get it all figured out. <laughs> so I was going to say that you, you've had a lot of experience in this. You said 17 years. I think that's really helpful too. Like when you're working with a new client, they need to know that you kind of already blazed the trail maybe three, five years ago. And they have a situation that they could say, all these things that my past client did, we could implement into your program because I think it'd be a really a good fit. So the experience helps that you've been there, done that. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, 22 years of, 21 years of corporate experience in, in an array of roles, um, 17 years of my own business. Um, mm -hmm. All these things have really, really um, enabled me to bring real world solutions to my client needs. Because as I said, I've seen, I've carried from, from my corporate world and even my business, mm -hmm. I've carried the bag. Mm -hmm. I've done sales. I've done leadership. I've done management. And even in my experiences with my clients, I've seen a lot of different industries and how those industries operate. So I'm able to take those outside perspectives and bring them into current situations. Do you work with a specific group of people within a specific industry or are you kind of like cross the board horizontally, anything from accountants to zoologists? <laughs> you know, the main, the main, um, I have probably five core verticals I work in. And the only reason and it's not just those five but the reason I work in those verticals is um, that's where I've had success so consumer back package goods is my background so companies that sell things you can buy in a grocery store or a drug store or a home depot I've had success in that world that's my background so my business has had an opportunity to grow organically through word of mouth other industries include the uh, um, um, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, uh, medical device, um, nursing, hospital systems, primarily because I've had success. And I, again, my business grows word of mouth. So I work with any, anybody, but I typically stay in certain verticals where I can continue leveraging that success. I, I have, I'm able to keep my business robust because you I've not done any work yet, but it's it's falling into my lap, it appears, would be attorneys. I'm getting a lot of input from people who are attorneys saying, hey, I think you can help us. So I'm starting to investigate that. So if things fall out of my vertical, I'll play with a little bit of traction. If I can't get traction, then I'm not going to focus a lot on yeah, there's it. There's always like that, a, that fringe stuff out there. Might as well take it if you can help them, and you never know what kind of... Uh... That's correct. Group that is. I knew a guy that uh, he used to do like local lead generation and all of a sudden he came up with this idea of um, being able to get an 800 number to ring for DWI attorneys. He was doing ads for people that got DWIs and of course on a Friday, Saturday night that happened. So they make that phone call. He got that phone number ringing and then he would sell that number to the attorney. But he never thought he'd be working with that group of people. But the opportunity showed itself. So Exactly. I was going to say, like a lot of the stuff you do, you maybe you work for a corporation 
and go to their facility. But do you ever do your own thing where you rent the room or you do the retreat or something and, and do training? Do you, you do the marketing? Yeah. Yeah, it's rare that I do that. Um, I have done that. Um, the, it's, the, the difficulty with that is, is what I call putting butts in the seats. Right. That's <laughs> You've got to get butts in the seats. Yeah, with a company, you typically have the management or human resources or head of training or vice president of sales saying, you need to be here on this date. You need to be at this workshop or having a meeting on this date. So that's a lot easier than trying to get butts in the seats. But if I you, I want to start a podcast with that said, I'm hoping I can reach to the general population as well, too. That would be really, to be honest with you, one of my, what I'd really like to do is touch the general population, because there's so many people who need, um, who don't have the, have the access to training, development, and insights from an outside person. The key is to get them to pay for that, and, and as I said, get those butts in the seats. What? Yeah. I, I also thought about it from a, cause I was working with a friend of mine's got a bunch of property in Costa Rica and we were looking to build an event center down there. So it may be the kind of thing where the corporation has the butts, you just got to provide the seats and they bring them down <laughs> yeah. to Costa Rica in the jungle and you do your trainings and your facilitation, you know, in a, in a, in a place that's not familiar. Yeah. Well, as you're saying, I mean, it's funny you're talking about this. As I said, attorneys have been a new interest of, with me. And I was speaking to a lady, I think yesterday or the day before, who's familiar. She, when another attorney recommended I reach out to her, because she does a lot of more business work around with attorneys, helping them with their billing, more nuts and bolts and business, uh, not the soft skills that I do. But she was telling me that I need to find a method, work with some people to get a location, and get those attorneys. Yeah. That one location. So that may be something I'm going to be doing in the very near future. And as I said, this podcast, one of the reasons I'm considering a podcast is to look at reach out to the general population as well, too. Well, it's, in, it's interesting with the internet, you can cast a wider net, but there's a lot of people casting that net. So that's where you end up having to figure out how can I get my part of the audience? How can I get them to listen to me? Right. How can I make more noise? <laughs> that's right. It's about getting your piece of the pie, so to speak. So that's very true. Yep. You know, it's easier when you're a Tony Robbins, a Stephen Covey, or Wayne Dyer, God rest his soul. You know, those are the big names. And even those guys have to really work at getting butts in the seats. So um, I hope to get my name recognition up, uh, up to there someday. But uh, fingers crossed, I'll get it. Well, there's some other interesting ways of getting that stuff done now with the, the good old internet. Because um, when people are out looking for things, they find, if you do your, your talk in like uh, as an evergreen, so it doesn't have a timeline to it, and more generic, they find it on their time. And sometimes people don't want to, you know, cut out a window of time. They want to, oh, I'm standing at the line at Chipotle. I think I'll uh, watch this video. You know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> sometimes they do that. I'm yeah. um, speaking of time. I don't like to do these too long because people do that, that commodity of time. So... Can you tell us if someone's interested in what you're doing and how you can help people communicate more clearly and make that connection, how do they get a hold of you? Your website or how do, how do we find you? Yeah, there's multiple ways. Um, the website, which is basically my last name, it's www.gavatorta.com. Um, email me. My email is very simple, steve at gavatorta.com. And uh, then free, feel free to Google uh, I have a lot of ways to contact me out there. Um, I have a lot of great content on YouTube. I'd recommend subscribing to my site. A lot of great free stuff, great videos of um, events I've done, um, okay. appearances on TV or radio and whatnot as well, too. I will uh, search some of those and I'll put them in the link in YouTube. That's where I'm going to beam this up to. But if you want to stick on here, we'll have another conversation. Other than that, um, there was some, some static and stuff, and we'll figure that stuff out. But um, I'm going to get this up, and I'll get a copy over to you as soon as possible and then propagate it out to the Internet, and maybe some attorneys will find it. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Steve. We'll talk soon. Peace. Thank you, sir.